Hi, and welcome to the Virginia Aquarium. I'm Chris Witherspoon, Vice President of Science Education. I'm here today to share with you our Life Above and Below the Mud exhibit, otherwise known as our Fiddler Crab Habitat. So what we're gonna take a look at today are the critters that we have here in this exhibit. Uh, you'll see fiddler crabs. These particular ones that are up front are red-jointed fiddler crabs. And you'll also see some periwinkle snails. And these are two very common animals that are in our marsh out, just outside along Owls Creek. Now what's special about this habitat is that it's the one habitat we have here at the aquarium uh, that has mud on the bottom rather than sand or uh, crushed coral or gravel. And that's because these animals are adapted to living on a mud surface. In fact, you'll watch the fiddler crabs picking up what looks like mud and putting it in their mouth with their smaller claw. That's actually how they feed. They're eating the dead, decaying plant matter that we call detritus that comes from the cord grass, the plant that you see in here as well. Uh, and that's how they get their food. And in fact, that detritus becomes food not only for the fiddler crabs, but for many, many animals that are just temporary visitors to the marsh using it as a nursery area. So a lot of young animals that need small food. It also releases nutrients that feed plankton, which we know is the base of our food chain here in Owls Creek as well as out in the ocean. Now one of the challenges if you're a guest who comes to look at the marsh, the animals are kind of small. And that means that if you're not familiar with what lives in a marsh, you might be overlooking a whole lot of critters running around just below you. One of the things we're going to do today, besides just learning a little bit about these animals, is to talk about the concept of scale. Scale gives you the relationship between the actual item, in this case the real live crab or snail, and the size of the model. So what we're gonna do is use our ruler. Uh, in the case of the snails, they're right up against the glass so I can um, get some pretty good estimations of their size. The fiddler crabs are a little bit farther back, but um, I can still do the same thing with holding my uh, ruler up and get a good estimation. What I'm gonna use is the large claw. I'm not, I don't have to measure every element of the animal. We'll just use that one measurement to get an idea of, of the scale of how much larger these models are. So we've taken our measurements of our live animals, or we're gonna really call them estimates because we didn't have those animals in hand. We had three quarters of an inch for the periwinkle snail as our estimate of its uh, shell length. And then we had for the crab, we had about an inch and a half length of its large claw, the male's large claw. So now what we're gonna do, using our tape measure, because these uh, models that are behind me are a little bit larger than what our ruler is. So let's take a look and see what, we'll start with this fiddler crab. We're gonna uh, measure its uh, large claw, and that looks like it's about 15 inches. So to calculate the scale, we would take 15 and divide it by 1.5 inches, and that comes out to 10. This large model is 10 times bigger than the actual crab. Now let's talk about the periwinkle snail. So our snail, when we measured it, was about, uh, the model was about 11 inches long, just the shell. And then we had a, um, the estimate of our snail shell was uh, three quarters uh, of an inch, uh, or so 0.75. So when we do our division, it comes out that the, that model is a little bit larger than the actual one. So it's a little bit more than 10 times. Well, if you have some realistic models at home, uh, you can try this yourself. And, uh, you bring your models out, you need something to measure them with, and then you just need a way to look up what the actual size of, of that particular animal. So it could be a field guide that I use today uh, to look up the size of, I'm gonna look up the size of our uh, cow nose ray model I have here, and, or you could go on the internet and, and find the size, so either way. Uh, and this also gives us an example of measuring a model where the real animal is larger than the actual model when we do this. So we're going to take a measurement of our cow nose ray model. And the way you measure rays, uh, they measure from what you call the, in the this is a cow nose ray, so from uh, across the disc or from tip to tip of what look like the wings is the proper way to measure. And we find that our model is uh, about seven inches wide that way. Now let's look it up 
When we look up Cal Nose Ray in our Atlantic Field Guide, we find that uh, the typical size of a full-grown adult would be three feet or 36 inches across the same uh, measurement. So if we divide 36 by seven, we come out with a little more than five. So that tells us that the real ray, Cal Nose Ray, is five times larger than our model, or the model is roughly a fifth of the size of, of the um, actual animal. So kind of the reverse of what we did with our fiddler crab and our uh, snail models. So have some fun, pull your animals out, learn a little uh, facts about them and find out how they relate uh, in size by scale with the actual animal that you can do a little research on.